We've got a, a standard Ford um, tractor and this machine here that we're actually making the fence posts on is called a peeler pointer. It's actually a German machine. The pole comes in on Joseph's side there. The worm in here is turning around and that pushes the pole against the blades that are on this disc. feeds the pole back over to this side and that's hopefully taking all the bark off or most of the bark off which goes up in the chute and into our bay over there. We're using the saw blade here to rip the posts down into two halves. And then to put a point on the post. These are the points that are coming off here. We put them straight into a, um, a bay over here where they season so they're drying out and then we use them uh, as our own fuel on site for barbecues. I think we could make about 100 an hour but it really depends on the sort of material that, we, that we're putting through. Uh, larger materials we can put into quarters so we can get four from each pole um, and smaller materials we might not even rip down and we just put a point on it and leave it as a round. So obviously there's more work for a round one and it's got to go through once and you only get one fence post out of it whereas a big one that we're cauterising goes through and then we get four fence posts out of it. So it also depends on the quality of the material as well. The chestnut fence posts are competing with a tannalised softwood. Um, the chestnut has a naturally occurring tannin in it so it's naturally rot resistant. It's also got a very high proportion of heartwood in it as well. So there's less sapwood which is going to rot on the fence post. So sweet chestnut fence posts are really good. They don't need treating. Um, we don't need to put chemicals on them to use them. A lot of people still make fence posts by hand. Um, the machine for us just quickens the process up a little bit. But you can cleave the posts with an axe and a, and a wedge, which is uh, still the traditional way of doing it. Um, and it's peeled and then pointed. It should last 10 years, 10 plus years. Depends on the, wet, on the ground conditions that it's going into, but it should last about 10 years plus. The sweet chestnut is coppiced on rotation, so we've got different blocks in the wood that are cut every 15 years, so it's sustainable, it's regrowing every year. We don't, in theory, need to restock the chestnut coppice. We should replant if there are a, a, a gaps, in, gaps appearing in it. Um, but we don't need to replant it, so it's a sustainable resource. We coppice in the winter for a couple of reasons. Um, the leaves are off the tree, so it's easier to deal with the material. Um, it's actually less material to deal with. Um, from an environmental point of view, wildlife point of view, um, we're not disturbing nesting birds and other, other um, animals and fauna in the wood. Um, particularly also wildflowers as well, bluebells, wooden enemies are not yet flowering. Um, so yeah, it's a winter, winter job. Also, um, physically you wouldn't want to be coppicing in the summer, it's too hot to be able to do that sort of work. It's a good, good winter work. <laughs>